So we're looking at the Treat Life DS01C. We're gonna show you how to flash this. No soldering, no cutting traces, just some special little simple sauce with a proper USB TTL and a bench power supply and get it done. Now the first item you're gonna need is some sort of external power supply. And we'll explain why, but you don't need this exact model. This is a zero to 30 volt and you can really dial in exactly what voltage you want. And then you can set the maximum amperage you want. You know, if you wanted to limit things in case you're worried about smoking anything. So you can dial in exactly what you want for any type of project. They are pretty cool and they are pretty valuable in helping out doing different projects. Then you do get the little screw terminals, plus you get these little banana plugs with the alligator clips. But like I said, you don't need this exact model. You just need something about maybe an amp that'll be able to do 3.3 volts because the little USB TTL such as this CH 340G here, or the special one we talk about, which I still don't know why it makes a big massive difference, but the CP2102 USB TTL. They simply do not have enough power because of the USB bus just doesn't have enough power to power both of the chipsets on this dimmer and this is the dimmer the ds01c by treat life i've also seen mo's they do have a couple other different models there's the ds02s it's a little different face plate and we're going to get to some of these different dimmer types and how to set them up in our dimmer breakdown video that we plan to do people were basically saying that you had to cut some traces because the secondary MCU on here wouldn't allow this chip here to flash. And if you remember, that's the same exact issue we had with the fan controller. And that's down in that blog post I'll leave down in the video description. But we had to do a jumper wire on the reset line to make the secondary MCU not talk. Because the problem is, there's a second chip in here. Behind here, there's a chip that handles all the dimming, it does all the LEDs, it does the touch on the faceplate, and basically it's talking to the ESP chip here. So don't get that confused when I say to you MCU. I know some people say, well, that's a Tuya MCU. Well, I always call this the ESP chip, even though it is the Tuya branded version of their little module they have. The Tuya MCU, by my definitions, is the secondary microcontroller in the back. And the problem is, it's talking to this ESP chip here, and then when you come over here and you got all your wires on your jig and everything and you stick it on here and hey, I want to flash Tasmoto or ESP home, right? Well, the problem is you're talking to the ESP chip. So is the MCU talking to the ESP chip and the ESP chip just doesn't know what to do. It, and then you can't flash it. Well, on some of the guides on the internet, they tell you that you have to cut the traces because there's no reset pin on this MCU. Well, thanks to several people on Discord, they said, hey, I can do these with a bench power supply, CP2102, and not cut the traces. And I was like, get out of town. You can't do that. It's not, it's, there's no difference. So I bought me a CP2102, and boom, it works. So I'm going to share it with you guys and gals here. And we're going to get this thing flashed and just take our shit out of the cloud. So first off, we're going to start with a little wiring diagram because this is a little different of the way you flash this with a bench power supply and like i said you can use some sort of wall ward or something that does 3.3 volts but i would recommend getting you a bench power supply if you can 
So first and foremost, you need your victim, right? The dimmer. So we all know that. Now, of course, you don't have to purchase any of the items from my links. They are affiliate links, but it does help support the channel, and we do appreciate it. You're welcome to get them wherever you need. Whatever you can need to do, just get them. So if you don't know what these are, these are DuPont jumpers. They come in all kind of different packs from like female to female, different sizes and lengths. And this is the male to male. They have male to female. Grab your variety pack. You're going to use them all the time and you're going to really buy more as you go on because, well, you'll just misplace them and you'll want all the pretty colors and stuff, right? Next thing, of course... They do have a couple different models, and I'm just showing two of them here. Get a USB TTL, and make sure it says C, as in cat, P as in Paul, 2102. Just a different package, but it has the same chip, has the pins. This one has a plastic case, and they're going to do the same job pretty much. So pick your poison, just get you a CP2102. I know I have talked about the CH340G, but trust me, I tried with this one many times and failed. Every time I would hook up these two 2102s, worked every time. Don't ask me, don't know why. If you know why, what's the magic of this one chip? You know the deal. Do the comment down below and teach us all something i don't know but guess what this works of course you do not require to do this because if you really enjoy the soldering game as much as i do but still like saving time is a little tywe3s jig and yeah i still have been printing these for people and if you are looking for one i'll leave this status down below and you can hit me up in email or Discord if you can't get one printed or locally or whatever it may be. Simply, if you haven't seen the videos, this just goes over the chip as so. And it pushes down on the pins and that way you don't have to do any of the soldering. And we just put a clamp on it and we flash it like that. It saves you a ton of time and especially if you suck at soldering. No hate, but I get it. A lot of people don't like soldering. I didn't. So just get you a jig. Or something. And with that, you will need some little test leads. And what this allows you to do is go ahead and clip onto the pogo pins. And then you can take the other end and if you can clip to the usb ttl itself pretty simple or if you're doing different things you can also clip to some of the dupont male jumpers as well it works well so definitely get you a set of test leads because reaching around to the front of the computer or a usb hub just sucks get you a little usb extension cable whatever length you need for your area. And as long as it does support USB 2.0, it doesn't need to be 3.0 because these TTLs are just 2.0, but definitely get you one that's a decent quality and want some cheap little thing. So that way you can just plug this guy in here and plug that around the back of the computer. And then you can unplug this right on the desk without having to reach around and do stupid stuff and knock your computer power out and whatever else. And then you, be blaming me for whatever you broke. Now, one thing I do need to mention that once you pop this dimmer open, this little cable here is plugged into this little pin header. Just unplug it. It is keyed, so don't worry about trying to figure out which way it goes. You can see it's got the little notch here. So when you go to plug it in next time, the little notch here goes towards the back. Now this ribbon cable, there's a little black plastic piece right here. If you take and pull that black plastic piece, 
and you pull both sides, you can see it comes loose, and then your ribbon cable will pop right out. And you really can't put this backwards, but just remember the blue does not face you when you go to put it back in. You should see those individual little strands when you go to plug it back in. And basically to plug it back in, it's just exactly the opposite. Make sure the little door is open, and then you'll put the wire in there, and then you'll close this little black door, and then it keeps that ribbon cable in it. You don't need to detach this ribbon cable here. And this may look like a lot going on here, which is why I stick to the wiring diagram. We got the dimmer faceplate in the jig with the clamp, so we don't have to hold it. Now remember, the power comes from the bench power supply. You're not using the 3.3 volts on the USB TTL. I want to reiterate that. Do not double power from this and this at the same time. Now you are sharing the ground between here and the bench power supply. Otherwise it just will not work. So we got RX and TX. Remember to flip RX to TX and TX to RX ground. And then the black, which is our GPIO zero, go all together. And this is this conglomerate of my shared ground and GPIO zero. So we'll make sure and get stuff ready. We're on COM4. It's up to you if you want to back up the original firmware. I'm not. I'm not going back. I'm going to go release at the time of this video. Let's go with 9.2. If you want to do development, it's up to you. Straight up tasmoda.bin. And yes, you do want to erase before flashing. And we will do the mouse. We'll leave it on Tasmotize. Plug it in. Turn the power on. We see we got our draw. Let's go ahead and hit Tasmotize. Now, if you did like I just did, I forgot to run it as administrator, so it does crash. Plug it back in. Turn on the bench power supply. Boom, we got our draw, and we'll hit Tasmatize. Drag this window so you guys can see it. It's going to download, and it shows connecting. And at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try again. We'll go ahead and let's just cycle the power and nothing. And you can see, just trying multiple times. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can see I just been tripping things back and forth, resetting this and then resetting that, just hoping that it doesn't interfere. I've actually heard of some other people, they've turn the voltage down just enough where the ESP is allowed to boot, but then the MCU won't boot. So you can also try that. All right, power cycle the device. Now I would not try the SIN config stuff because that secondary MCU is gonna be in the way. You will need to just power cycle it without GPIO zero. And then we're going to check for it using our phone or Wi-Fi or whatever for that Tasmodo access point. Turn off the power, disconnect the USB flasher, and go find the IP address to this Tasmodo device and browse over to the console. A few little setup we're going to run through real quick because this is not the dimmer video, but I don't want to leave you hanging if you don't know how to set this guy up. Now there is no template needed. This is a Tuya MCU. Go to configuration, go to configure module, change it from Sonoff Basic, go down here to the Tuya MCU. You could also on the console type module space 54 since this is number 54 and this would accomplish the same exact thing. Don't change any of these, that's not for the Tuya MCU. There's no GPIO pins really. Hit save. So we'll go to console just to verify it is working. Easiest way you can see, if you can catch it in the boot up, you should see the MCU product ID with the, I guess, build, then the version, etc., and then you know that your Tuya MCU is working. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this spaghetti mess of things, and we'll 
put it back together, put it on mains power, and we'll show you how to get it configured. If you're about to click off the video, stick around. You may learn something. We're going to show you how to get the lowest dimming value on the console. And no, it's not the dimmer range. We'll go ahead and plug this guy in and see what we get. First thing you want to do is look on the main menu of the dimmer itself. You notice there's no slider. We need to assign that. And it's real simple to do. There's a couple little cheats. Go ahead and type in weblog4. And then do a Tuya send zero. And what we're looking for is there's multiple DPIDs, and most likely ID usually is going to be one for the relay, and then either two or three for the actual dimming value. So to set that, we'll try Tuya MCU 21, comma two. And then you can see it does get brighter. So this one is 2UMCU21, 2. But we do need to set the dimmer range. So you'll notice this RX value for DPID3, and this can vary per dimmer. We're going to try to set that as a different value in hopes to see if that is the actual low dim range of the 2UMCU. Now this is not the dimmer range of Tasmoda. So we'll do a to you send two comma three comma 200 and we'll see if that changes the brightness and sure enough you may not be able to tell on the camera but it did change the d low dim value so on this particular bulb I'm gonna go ahead and change it even lower now it can vary per bulb so you don't copy exactly what I'm putting let's do 25 it even got even lower. So the lowest value it's letting us put it for DPID3 is 10, which that's going to be the lowest dimming. And it actually is very, very dim. It's just I have a lot of lights going on here so we can see it on the camera. And we will go over this in a future video more in depth, how to set the dimmer value, not the dimmer range. We're going to do the dimmer range in the dimmer itself to match your bulbs. Now for the dimmer range, you can go to the highest. It's RX value, as you can see here, is 1000. Now let's go all the way down, and the RX value is 10. So we're going to set dimmer range 10 for the low value, 1000. And what that's doing is that's telling Tasmoda what is the lowest you got on the faceplate and the highest you got on the faceplate? And that way, it's always going to match based on the faceplate because you have to keep the two synced up. You cannot control the LED at the bottom and you cannot do double press, long press, etc. Because it's a two-year MCU, unfortunately. If you're looking to do something like that with dimmers, look at those Martin Jerry dimmers or the Tessin in ton power, etc. Now, another thing I like to do to get more of a linear dimming is I like to set LED table zero. Don't forget to set set option 59 that makes it respond with the light change, dimmer change during every time you do change the dimming. If you just do SO591, now Every time you change the dimming, it's going to respond with that telemetry update. That way you get all your updates really quickly in Home Assistant or whatever you might be using. How to flash the DS01C dimmer. No cut and traces. Nothing really simple. The magic of the CP2102. I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It helps bring new products and new things to the channel each week. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon and y'all take care.